This is Modern Homesteading. We've had unseasonably warm weather on the homestead this winter. I don't know what, what's going on, uh, yet have we had a proper snow. So this has um, allowed us to spend a lot of time uh, in our forest. As many of you guys that follow the channel know that uh, we um, have and maintain a stewardship forest, a state recognized uh, forest, and we're uh, in the process of cleaning that up um, and uh, ridding it of invasive species and protecting it from wildland fire and, and all the many things that I've shared with you in the past. So as we were working on one of the trails uh, uh, yesterday, I thought, boy, it sure would be handy to, I should go get my weed whipper or get, my, or, you know, get a, a string trimmer. Uh, it would make our job a lot easier. Then I remembered that my string trimmer is not running properly. So, so I got to thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, string trimmers are actually a, a pretty new invention. They haven't been around that long, uh, but weeds have been and tall grass that needed cutting around the home and, or homestead. What do the old timers do? And I got to thinking about it, and I thought, well, I remember on the wildland fires, uh, guys used to use on the on the down in the southern areas, the southern states where there was a lot of grassland, the old weed whips. And I got to digging around, and I remembered that I had stashed one. I think someone had left it here uh, before we purchased it, and I kind of just threw it in the back with a bunch of junk, dis disregarding it, and thinking, well, that's a, a an antique, a relic of the past. I won't be having any need for that. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to me. I thought, well, what if it was really sharp and taken care of? You know, how effective is that tool? That's been something that's been around for a long time. And then I thought, you know, that kind of goes back to our whole whole theme of, you know, getting keeping things simple and, and inexpensive on the homestead. And I thought, for areas where you have just a little bit of grass, um, do you really need to go out and to buy, spend $500 on a string trimmer and then the continuing cost that comes with maintenance and gas and oil and, and you know, all of those, that, that monofilament that you put on and buy and buy and buy, where do you think all that's going? You know, it's all going up back out into the environment. It's all going back out into your land and picked up by birds and who knows what. And I thought, is that really necessary? You know, this is not a substitute for that in all cases, if you're a professional landscaper, of course, but does it have a place? And I think it does. Um, and I have, I don't think I've ever used one of these, but um, I'm about to. So I've got this old one and uh, let's uh, see if we can't restore it, bring it back to some really nice condition. We'll put a nice edge on these serrated ends, um, put a beautiful handle on it and clean it up and see, just see what we can do with this. This is a pretty straightforward uh, uh, restoration here, but let's start with the handle. I've got the old handle here, but uh, it's beyond repair. It's got a lot of rod in it. It's, it's essentially uh, had it. So I've got an old shovel handle that I broke off, and as is my custom, uh, since I'm tall, um, I add six inches to my tools. So right there, I added six inches to it, and so this is the handle. We'll uh, clean that up really nice on the spoke shave, make that like new. This blade had a little bit of a bend in it, and I actually kind of got started a little bit before the video. I wasn't going to do a video on this, but you can see there that I've got a nice edge on that serration parts, and we'll clean all this up with the wire brush, and this is excellent steel. I really realized that when I was trying to straighten it. It had a little bit of a bend in it. I'm still working on it, but man, it was a good hard piece of a rigid spring steel with a nice serrated cut in it, and then uh, of course the arms are in good shape. We'll just need to clean those up. I've got some new hardware. Uh, the old hardware at the top there, we can reuse that. Got some carriage bolts there. We'll clean those up. And then I've requisitioned from Granddad's old bolt box a couple of nice stainless steel um, screws with aviation nylon lock nuts on there. Uh, we'll use those to secure the blade to the bracket. So let's get started cleaning up this blade, see if we can't put a really nice sharpened edge on it that would make the folks at Spyderco proud. Uh, there's a myriad of different ways that we could clean this up. One thing that's just a, such an essential tool for restoring these old tools is a uh, cup wire brush just to fit on your standard grinder. That's what I'll use today. We'll get this rust knocked off and then we'll uh, chalk it up in the vise and see if we can't put a really nice edge on it. So I'm going to start by securing this blade to the bench using a couple of Phillips screws here. That way I can use two hands on the grinder and really get some, uh, some pressure on it. I don't want to put a clamp on here because I don't want to spring that steel and bend that blade. Look at that, isn't that nice? It cleaned up good. You know the thing with these old tools, you know, working with this steel, I really get appreciation that it's a good, high quality, high carbon steel. 
Uh, it's just not like the steel you're going to get today. You may be able to buy a grass whip that looks like this, but it's not going to be like this. It's not going to be built to this standard. Um, it's, it's nice. It's in, it's, it's, you know, things like this you can pick up and you could restore yourself in your garage. You don't have to have a, a super shop. You can do things like this and, and you can probably get this tool for free or 50 cents at a garage sale. And man, once you own it, uh, it's done. It doesn't cost you anything. There's very little maintenance to do on it. And it's, it's, worth, it's worth having. It's worth taking care of and, and using. So I've got the paint stripped off of one of the side supports and that uh, is going to be nice. There's no reason to have paint on tools. There's, uh, unless you, it's your custom to leave them outside in the rain, uh, but tools that are taken care of and oiled and kept sharp, um, you, don't, you don't need paint on them. It's just an extra step that's just completely unnecessary. So here's the other support. You know, one pe some people might recommend uh, glass beading or sandblasting this stuff. And yes, although it is quicker, I don't like doing it too much anymore because what it does is it pits the surface and it creates, it creates almost the perfect environment for uh, rust to start. It's almost impossible to keep tools uh, clean and from rusting uh, when they've had that glass beaded or sandblasted finish. So having a nice polished uh, wire brush finish on it like this almost kind of burnishes it and polishes it and really gives rust a difficulty. It, it, it gives it a, a hard place to get a foothold. So the supports cleaned up really nice, got a nice polish on them, that'll help keep from rusting. You know, I was thinking of when I was working on this, I was working on the inside of these and it was really hard to get to with the grinder and, and it, was just, it was just a hassle and you know, the, obvious, the thing that always comes to mind is, uh, you know, just take a shortcut here, no one's going to see that, you know, that, uh, what, what difference does it make as long as the outside's polished, no one's going to notice. Well, it's, it's not about, I don't care if no one notices it, I notice it and, and I want it to be right. I read a story uh, from, I think it was written by an archaeologist that were, they were kind of um, going through and, and breaking down some old wooden sailing ships, uh, some old, the old car, English uh, carpenters had built years ago. And they found in one of them um, uh, where the carpenter had, had drilled a hole in the wrong spot. And it would never have shown. No one had ever known about it. You know, he simply moved over and drilled the hole in the right spot. And, and he could have just left it there. Uh, as I said, no one would have ever seen it. It was covered up with a decking. But he took the extra time to fill that hole with a dowel and, and, and shave it off and finish it. Uh, because why? Why did he do that? No one would ever see it. No one would ever know about it. He knew about it. And it was important to him. And that's the thing that we really have get, gotten away from, many of us. I mean, I, I used to think that way. I mean, I, I used to work with guys in constructions and, you know, guys would say, oh, you know, good enough for government work or can't see it from my house. You know, I've seen that, my, I've said that myself, you know. I used to do, say and, and work that way back when I was a fool. You know, and then once I started waking up and thinking, you know, it does matter. It does matter how we do things and, and to do them correctly. You know, I don't say things like that and I don't like to hear or work with guys that, that work that way and it shouldn't be done that way. You know, if we would all just live by the golden rule, what's the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Would you want guys that are pouring the foundation of your daughter's or, or your granddaughter's home? Um, that's the mentality that they had. Oh, yeah, it's crooked. It's not straight. It's not plumb. Um, that's all right. Can't see it from my house. What do I care? You know, I'll put up the, the shoddy work, you know, that'll probably crack and the basement will leak. You know, that's, that, that's a, a it, it, it's, you know, that can you imagine the shipbuilder? Can you imagine what he would have thought of working with a guy, the guy that took the time to fill a hole that was drilled in the wrong spot? You know, that's, I'm ranting. Let's get back to the, let's get back to the work. All right, so we've got the, uh, everything polished up. Let's go to work on the handle. See if we can't uh, break out granddad's old spoke shave and clean up this old gray dead wood and put a nice, uh, nice finish on this handle. Aviation grade nuts, so we don't have to ever worry about those backing off or coming loose. Stainless steel on the bottom. Custom handle.